All of you have already done the satellite motion and the uh, satellite motion with the uh, projection, which is at an angle. Uh, now you're introducing to the children the um, cannonball, and this cannonball uh, worksheet works as the basis for your uh, ball in the cup challenge. And all that you have to do is uh, drive the whole inquiry where you separate the uh, horizontal or X motion and and vertical Y motion. Uh, this may be an ideal place to develop the terminologies like uh, VXI, AX, and uh, VYI, AY, and X and Y, and see the fact that the T seems to be common in both of them. And that is the important thing that you need to lock on to, is that how the T for the X motion and T for the Y motion is the same, because the object is in the same position, irrespective of whether X or Y. So that is some understanding they need to get. And uh, none of the other ones are the same except those two, uh, except that one. And here we really not worried about the VXF, which will be the same as VXI, and he is a VYF, we are not calculating. So in some cases we may calculate it, that's okay. So you're given the initial velocities. Uh, so they need to understand, to find out the horizontal range, uh, they're given the horizontal range, in order to find the time, they can use the vertical fall in order to find the, this thing. So they might use VY is equal to zero because it's same like a drop body, and AY is equal to 9.8 meter per second squared, and y is 5 meters, t is equal to what? They will be able to calculate that. So using uh, y is equal to v y i t plus 1 half a sub y t squared. This is what I meant by introducing the terminology here, uh, or like a symbol, uh, symbolism here, like what is the symbols you are used appropriately for x and y. May repeat that for them so that they will be able to get this right. And you can always Substitute five now five meters is equal to zero meters per second times time plus one half of nine point eight meter per second squared times time squared. From this easily they can find out t to be equal to something like uh, ten divided by nine point eight uh, seconds. And uh, once they find out what the actual value for that. They use this time and say it has traveled 20 meters. Now this is all from your VY part. But now you can take the VX part of it and say, hey, this is the velocity is not changing. VXI times T is equal to the 20 meters or X, which is so that means VXI times uh, 9.10 divided by 9.8 is something like 1.1 or something like that. 1.1, uh, let us assume that's 1.1, this is a, times 1.1 seconds uh, equal to 20 meters. So immediately you can find VXI to be 20 meters divided by 1.1 meter seconds. Approximately it may come to uh, what are 19.8 or something like that, 19.6 meters per second, meters per second. So that is basically what we are doing. Now how is this related to our Let's look at how this is related to our ball in the cup thing. So, so let me just bring in one of the ball in the cup apparatus for you. I'm going to get out of screen for a second. Give me a minute. So here you have. Here you have this one which is going to be clamped to a, a, a table and you're going to roll the ball and it's going to launch off. Okay, so let us see this, uh, what happens. So here you have a different situation. You have a table and you have a rack. The ball is going to come in. Now at this end point, it's actually going horizontally. It's going to get launched horizontally. So it's pretty much like the cannonball. But what we are not, this time what we have not given is how much downrange is this landing. So we do not know the x. 
but they can still calculate the t because they can use a meter scale and find out how much time it will take to jump to this height. So they can still use the h is equal to a y one half times a y times t squared. They measure the height. This is measured, and that is therefore this is known, and they'll calculate the t. But what they do not know is the horizontal velocity. Now, you, they are not allowed to drop the ball and find the time. So they have to calculate it. They are not allowed to try it out on the top of the table. But what they are allowed is to work on the floor. So what these children, this essentially you are trying to take the inquiry to a point where they will put it on the floor, possibly you can focus it on the floor. You put it on the floor and keep it down like this and drop it. So the marble is going, going there. So they need to devise an experiment where they take a fixed amount of distance, time it, and then at the, after it's launched first from here, and find out the velocity or the initial velocity of it. It's an approximate value. It's not going to be perfect because it's going to keep slowing down, but it's a reasonable estimate. And use that reasonable measure the time multiple times, three times they do that, and they divide and forget the average velocity, horizontal launch velocity. They use that horizontal launch velocity and multiply by the time to find out this range. Then what they can do is they have to mod from the edge of the table to where it should land, and we put a small paper with some targets, and then it lands on the target in the right place. You can use your teacher um, uh, cap capacity and tell them, hey, you get less points or more points or whatever it is. And work must be given a lot more uh, and the whole planning to calculating the time, cal finding out the velocity. They all have certain value in this particular thing. If they do not finally get the actual distance correctly, maybe you want to dock a few points for that. Otherwise, I think uh, make sure that they guide, you guide through this particular process. Make sure that they do not test it. Be very clear about them. If you drop the ball or you test it, you will be immediately disqualified, which means they will lose all the points for the, uh, uh, this. so, so you, you, you may want to tell the, somebody in the team to be responsible for this and uh, not drop it.